Okay, if you watch any of the same YouTube channels that I watch, I'm going to bet that the last couple of years you've noticed many videos regarding through night and Olight flashlights. Okay, what we have on the table to talk about today is the Olight S1A baton, the Olight S2A baton, the Thrunite Archer 1A V3 and the Thrunite Archer 2A V3. These all take um, AA batteries and then the uh, Thrunite Archer 1A V3 and the Olight S1A baton can also take 14500 uh, 3.7 volt rechargeable batteries. Um, this video is not intended to be a review and it's not even intended to be a direct comparison between any of these flashlights. Uh, there are some differences between these lights that I think have been glossed over. Uh, there are a few details that people miss or maybe misconstrue when they've talked about them on video and then of course some of the things I've read on the flashlight forums, EDC forums and other places where we discuss items like this. So I'm going to give you my take on these lights and we're just going to get right into it. Okay. I think we'll start with a detail about the Olight S2A baton that I think, uh, I think most people who comment on this get it wrong. Uh, the tail cap of the S2A baton does not come with, uh, it's not magnetized. Um, the, the S1A baton has a magnet in the tail cap and that's useful, you know, in a lot of circumstances. Um, you know, it's, uh, the, the thing that most people say is like, you know, your car hood. You know, you can stick that to your car hood while you're, while you're working on something and it, uh, you know, it's a hands-free sort of deal. The Olight S2A baton does not come with a magnet in the tail cap. And that tends to disappoint some people, but then when the conversation goes on about it, invariably, Someone will say, oh, well, it's heavier. It's heavier, so a magnet's not strong enough to do you any good. Um, well, let's talk about that. We're going to hit the weight of these items twice in this, in this discussion today. But um, the Olight S1A baton in copper, this is one of the limited editions. Really kind of a nice, this is my EDC. This is what I choose to carry every day. And we're going to talk about why that is too when I quite obviously own a bunch of other appropriate flashlights. Uh, but for the moment, this one comes with a magnet and a tail cap. The S1A in copper weighs 3.65 ounces. And so a little over three and a half ounces. The S2A with two batteries in it, as you see it, you know, right here, just normally configured. The S2A weighs 3.02 ounces and it doesn't come with a, there's no magnet in the tail cap. So it isn't the weight. It isn't the weight. Um, here, let's as I knock everything around, let's demonstrate this. Uh, let me find something. Oh, that's plastic. Here, we'll just use a couple of, a couple of battery tails. Um, you know, obviously the magnet is plenty enough to keep this thing, you know, mounted to something. And I'll say from personal experience that, uh, that, um, I use this magnet every day just about. I go to sleep a little bit later than everybody else in my household. Uh, normally, not all the time, but you know, most of the time I go to bed later than everybody else. And, and I use this flashlight to navigate my way through the house on the moonlight mode. And our bathroom has a, uh, a medicine cabinet that's got some metal um, uh, hinges on the doors. And I stick that to one of those metal hinges and 
and then you know wash my hands and my face whatever else I need to do there over the sink and it illuminates the bathroom quite nicely the magnet is plenty for three and a half plus ounces so uh, the idea that they've neglected the magnet on a three ounce on a half ounce more than a half ounce lighter device um, nope that isn't why so I don't know why but that isn't why. It isn't because of the Okay, way. so the next thing to talk about is there's quite a difference in technology uh, for what these two companies use, and these particular flashlights anyway, that not across their product line, but these particular flashlights, and there are a couple others where we could point to this difference. But the technology that Olight uses for their reflectors is very different than what Thrunite uses for their reflectors. These are, they aren't even similar. Now, I think that this gets glossed over uh, in, the, in the forums and all of these videos. I'm not sure I've seen anybody else try to tackle this in a video. Uh, there may be some videos where people have talked about it, but I haven't seen them yet. Um, the technology or the terminology that Olight uses it is some uh, acronyms. Uh, the first one is TIR. TIR stands for Total Internal Reflection. Now I'm going to roll in some pictures right here. I found this incredibly difficult to photograph um, and it really doesn't come up very well on camera. But if you look at that lens hopefully you can see that it's concave, it, it's shaped inward. It isn't just a flat lens across the, the bezel of the, of the flashlight like almost every other flashlight in the world. Um, it's caved in, it's concave. And then in the center, that center is, is part of the same uh, material and it's convex. It's wrapped around the LED. Okay, so this technology of just, you know, this orange peel reflector, even if it wasn't orange peel, even if that was just a, a smooth reflector in a cone shaped, well, in a cone shape, you know, that's been around forever. Uh, that's been around since incandescent bulbs in flashlights. Um, the difference between an incandescent and an LED is far more than just the power and the light output and the color of the light. Um, an LED puts out light in 180 degrees. A incandescent, and I don't have one here to show you, I meant to bring an old flashlight from, you know, some old camping stuff but they produce light in basically in 360 degrees. I mean, effectively, there's a small spot that, uh, where, where the connector is, where the screw part that screws into, into the receptacle, uh, there's a small portion that doesn't have light shining that way, but effectively, they produce light in every direction, where an LED produces light at 180 degrees. So when we wrap, you know, this, this TIR device around it. This is a two-stage process. You can design your beam. Um, basically, that center part that goes around the, around the LED, it's refractive. And then it spreads the light out to the reflector. And then the reflector is designed however you want your beam to be designed. You know, I'm not privy to exactly their math and their AutoCAD files that help them design their beam the way it is for these particular lights. But I'm going to roll in a graphic here. And this graphic came from a website that I'm going to link down below. Uh, the article I'm linking is on archlighting.com. And the author of that article is... Alice Liao. This style of, you know, just a reflector covered with a lens, uh, even though there's some good technology in, in these orange peel reflectors and the, uh, 
and the uh, uh, anti-glare coatings and things that go on the lenses. And you can do a lot to shape your beam and do a lot of different, you know, you can produce a beam that you want to produce if you know how to do the math and, you know, you've got the right software and the right know-how, you can, you can create some very cool things with, a, you know, just this basic old technology. Um, but this newer technology, the TIR, it's more effective. <laughs> it just, it's more effective. It's designed for the way the LED actually works, where, where this style of, uh, this style of reflector actually isn't, you know, it's, it's just what we've always done. There, we, there are some, there are some advancements. I'm not saying that there aren't. There's, quite a lot of math and technology that go into how how these style of reflectors are made and uh, and the coatings on the lenses etc uh, but this is a whole new ball game that's built into the Olight um, now uh, the other acronym that they use is uh, the other acronym is PMMA and I'm going to try to get this right. That's polymethyl methacrylate. So it's an acrylic. Uh, this is an injection molded. The lens that they use, this, this whole reflective, the whole TIR is uh, injection molded acrylic. And this type of acrylic is desirable because of it, it's got a couple of pretty good properties. Uh, one of them is the clarity. It, it can be, it can really let a lot of light through where you want it to. Um, oh, and then another thing about this type of acrylic happens to be UV stable. Uh, that, that can have light sh shown through it at all eight spectrums of the sun for a very long time before it begins to break down. So this type of acrylic, this, uh, this PMMA, a very desirable stuff for this application. Uh, again, read that article. She talks a little bit about that and how this is done. Okay. Um, so there we go. We covered the, we covered that little bit of technology difference. And, um, now, I'm going to hit one more thing, and th this is one of those things that kind of intrigues me about why people, you know, the discussions I see about why people choose this flashlight or that flashlight, you know, for different reasons. I, I, I am a little bit intrigued. I said that there was a couple of things where my take on how things are might be a little bit different than other people in, in their video reviews and some of the discussions you see in the forums. Um, one of the things that is a big deal to a lot of people about the flashlight they're carrying is how it might help them it, with self-defense. Uh, these flashlights have some self-defense capabilities built into them and some of them are different than others and this is uh, you know a lot of modern flashlights uh, for instance you know when we look at this uh, there's a strike bezel on these through nights they've they've got some raised edges on them so you know you whack somebody in the cheekbone with that you know you're, you're gonna come away with some of their DNA you're gonna cut them probably this isn't anywhere near you know, as aggressive as I've seen on a lot of other flashlights that are really designed to be a weapon. Uh, but this does have a nice strike bezel. Uh, the Olights do not. That is a very smooth bezel. They aren't designed that way. They don't have... Now, both of these lights, or all four of these lights, they do have a self-defense feature that all of them share, and that's a strobe. Uh, so, you know, you get to that a couple different ways with these, with these lights. We're not going to go through that, so no strobe warning. I'm not going to strobe all these lights for you. But they do, they all have that self-defense capability built into Something them. Something that I see discussed in the forums regarding these, uh, particularly these limited edition Olight S1A batons, uh, is the weight of these. Now these have come in stainless steel. Uh, I don't know what material the rose gold color is made out of, but they're also heavy. And then this copper one. 
a lot of guys in the forums say, oh, well, why would you carry, you know, this 3.65 ounce flashlight when the regular, when the regular aluminum S1A weighs 1.82 ounces with a battery in it. It's, it's, it's almost two, it's, it's one and more than three quarters of an ounce lighter. You know, this is very light, you know, there's nothing to it. Uh, why would you do that? Why would you carry extra weight? I'm gonna tell you why you might carry extra weight. I'm gonna tell you right now that there's a roll of nickels. A uh, roll of nickels weighs about 7.07 .07 ounces, almost 7.1 ounces. Um, yeah, roll of nickels. Uh, gee whiz, when I was a youngster, when I was in my 20s, uh, a couple of my friends were, were big burly guys, rough fellas who uh, would do um, security for concerts and events at a couple of the rougher bars in our area. And uh, once in a while there'd be an event big enough where they need to come up with, you know, extra personnel for security. Uh, there were a couple of bands that were popular enough to bring an eclectic crowd. You know, you'd have bikers and hippies and, and rednecks all in one place and invariably that meant somebody needed to be bounced. When I was in my 20s, I was a little bitty guy. I weighed about 155, 160 pounds at best. But my buddies brought me along and helped me make a little money, introduced me to their boss. And, and when that guy was telling me about how bouncing was at some of these events, I said, you know, I'm not sure I am the right guy for the job. Is there anything else, you know, you'd want me to do instead of that? And he says, no, you'll be just fine. He handed me two rolls of nickels. Handed me two rolls of nickels. This is one of those. I've been carrying this roll of nickels. I haven't had it in my pocket this whole time, but I have owned this roll of nickels since about 1988, uh, maybe 1989. It was sometime in there. Um, yeah, the other roll that I was carrying that night got broke, and I, I cold cocked uh, a couple three fellas. Um, yeah, so why would you want a heavier device? Um, there's some heft to this at three and three quarter ounces. There's a little heft to that. And it's just about the right size, about identical to a roll of nickels. So, you know, it's, it's just a little bit smaller than that roll of nickels as far as the diameter. So when you're keeping yourself from breaking the bones in the back of your hand when you slug somebody, huh, <laughs> you know, the, having that little bit of heft, having that little bit of weight, and then having that support for your knuckles and the bones in the back of your hand. Yeah, that's why you might carry a heavier, a heavier one. Not just because of the looks, but because this is... Uh, Let's move heavy. on. Uh, the Through Knight Archer 2A V3. This isn't a very popular light, I don't think. Um, that's why. That's why I see this complaint from just about everybody. That uh, it's rattly, it feels kind of funny, the clip is in kind of a weird place. Uh, the knurling is just back here and up here and, and um, you know, uh, now I was just talking about self-defense capabilities. Um, you know, this thing has this this uh, has the strike bezel on it, and then this thing has a strobe. Um, this isn't a whole lot shorter than certain Kubitons. I've, I've seen some shorter Kubitons where, you know, guys who practice with those and know how those things work, I think you could control somebody's fingers pretty well or poke this in somebody's eye pretty well or wrap it around somebody's wrist pretty well or all those things that people do with Kubitons. So, you know, when you consider that it feels a little cheap and it's a little bit weird and the head's a little funny looking and I think people ought to give this a second look if they have any experience with a Kubaton. Um, I'm not a Kubaton guy, but I know a couple of guys that uh, are pretty slick with those things. I know a law enforcement guy that, man alive, when he does demonstrations for the high school kids, holy cow, yeah, he can, he can wrap up uh, the football coach in about three seconds and have him begging for mercy on his knees, you know, with just a little stick. Uh, pretty impressive. So you Kubaton guys, while we were talking about the self-defense capabilities, 
you might consider that even though this is um, you know it's rad. where this one's a little too short for that but I'm gonna tell you something that I wish Olight knew wish they'd make this one in a copper you know if they made this one and just judging by the fact that this is three and three quarter ounces uh, this flashlight's not quite twice as long but darn near I bet we'd come out around six and a half to, you know, pretty near the weight of a roll of nickels, and it's a little bit shorter. You know, that's just, uh, just we'll like perfect. made this one in a copper, or uh, if they made the S2A in a copper or a stainless steel, I'd buy that up. I'd buy that at twice the price. Um, you know, right now, let's see, the S2A baton sells for $39.99 right now. And yeah, you betcha, I'd give them 55, 60 bucks, maybe 65 bucks for a copper version of this or a stainless steel version of this. That'd be, wow, you know, have, have the whole weight of a roll of nickels in my palm plus the flashlight plus the strobe if, I, if you ever had time to actually deploy your strobe when you needed it. You know, I don't, I don't know the value of that. I wonder about that. I read all the discussions about people talking about if a strobe can actually help you in the self-defense sort of deal. You know, are you going to have time to deploy it and remember to, you know, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I really don't know. Okay, now, uh, I'm about done talking about these flashlights. We're going to hit just a couple of... Uh, couple of bonus information and then we're going to finish this up. Uh, I said we talk about some accessories. This is something you should own. Go to Meritac. This is a, uh, I, I keep a uh, uh, 14500 in this and in my pocket or in my backpack. So I've always got a spare battery for my, for the flashlight I'm carrying. Um, that's a, uh, he calls that, a Del it's made out of Delrin. It's Delrin's uh, plastic that's pretty easy to mill. Um, you know, this isn't injection molded. They mill these. That's, that's how you deal with Delrin is milling. And it's waterproof, and he calls it a battery locker. This one's the AA size. If you're spending money at Meritac for some reason at Countycom, uh, get yourself some of those. Um, now, let's talk about... Here's something. Olight, this is their 14500 battery. This is their rechargeable 3.7 volt battery. Um, huh, look at that. Doesn't fit in a AA battery container. Um, you know, where a regular AA fits right in there. When you put this in, in the uh, S1A baton, uh, it compacts the spring completely. Uh, do not buy these batteries. It's a terrible idea. One of your best safety features in your flashlight, especially if you're using a rechargeable 3.7, 4.2 volt battery, uh, is your spring. If you have a short, if you get a little moisture in there or something happens to the, to the metal strip that goes along the side of this battery and joins the cells together, if you have a short and it overheats, your best, your best safety feature is the fact that when the spring heats up, it collapses. This completely collapses the spring. This is absolutely inappropriate for their single AA, you know, uh, flashlight. Um, so don't buy these. This, this, uh, this is the Olight. Let me see if I can... That's their 14500 from Olight. Don't buy this for their S1A. Other reasons, maybe. Maybe you find a good reason. But it doesn't fit. Look how much bigger it is. Let's see if I can... Whoops. That landed right on my shoe. It's standing there on my shoe. That was incredible. Um, but yeah, compared to... doesn't fit in the... You know, it doesn't go in there. It's, it's too long and it's thicker. It, it's fatter and longer than a, even a double AA, A double A. Uh, most 14500s are somewhat smaller than a regular double A. Um, this one's made by AW, Andy Wong. That's just, I like them. You know, there's always things to talk about with uh, rechargeable batteries. We're not going to get too deep into that, except for 
noting quite a lot of difference in length and <laughs> diameter as well. Uh, they're substantially different. Don't buy the Olight batteries for the Olight flashlight. It's a terrible idea. Uh, let's see. Next. One more thing that um, uh, this, is, this is through Knight's own fault. Um, if you look at the specs on their website regarding uh, the, the Archer 1A V3, if you look at the specs on their website regarding that light, um, it's going to tell you that its beam, maximum beam distance is only 66 meters, where the Archer 2A is 108 meters. And if we do compare it to the uh, S1A and S2A, the, S, the, the Olight S2A is 110 meters and the S1A is 118. Um, and I talked about the difference in technology in their lenses and, and their reflectors and how that works a little bit. And I linked you to an article that has nothing to do with it. When this light came out, it didn't officially support a 14500. Um, with a 14500 in it, this thing's well over 500 lumens at its highest setting. And uh, therefore, its beam can throw a little bit further. Uh, you, you know, it, it's designed to throw it pretty far, you know, but it isn't 66 meters. It's probably closer to 110. I will say just anecdotally, uh, across the parking lot here where I work, we're in the kitchen where I work, across the parking lot here, we've got a, uh, a whole row of storage units and they're about 450 feet away. Uh, when I shine this on its highest setting over there, when I shine the light I carry every day over there. You know, it lights up those, it, you can see over there, but you can't see any definition of the beam. Uh, it takes about 20 or so steps and you can start to see the definition of the beam. The beam starts becoming something you can see it's the beam. Um, with this one, it takes a lot closer to 45 steps before you start seeing the beam. So, you know, it might be 10 meters less you know, it might be about 10 meters. That it, this may be about a 100 meter beam, and this one's about a 110 meter beam, or 118, I guess they advertise. But just from my own anecdotal, you know, non scientific testing, I can start to see beam definition, the edges of the light on those doors over there at those storage units, um, you know, a lot closer than I can this. Uh, not like a lot closer, but yeah, 30, 40 feet, you know, 30, 40 feet closer. So at least a 10 meter difference in those in my non-scientific testing. Uh, the confusion about that is through Knight's own fault. They refuse to update the information on their website. Um, don't know what to say about that. You'd think if you were marketing something like that, you'd want to give people as much information okay, as possible. Okay, we've had... Pretty good look at a bunch of, you know, double A battery style taken flashlights from Olight and Through Night. Uh, there's, I'm not, I don't have anything negative enough to say about any of them to say don't buy one of these because every one of these is worth owning. Uh, this is my least favorite. I talked about that, that rattly, I don't like it. I don't like that rattling and I don't think it takes even small drops very well. Uh, I've damaged a couple of batteries, but uh, great glove box light. If you need something for a glove box light for a flat tire or you're broke down and you're going to need to walk by the road, uh, two double A's, long run time, four different modes of, of brightness. Uh, awesome. Yeah, awesome for that sort of thing. Um, this is probably my favorite light of the bunch. I wish this, they made this in copper. If they made this three times as heavy as it is, I'd carry it. This would be every day, this would be on me. Um, I just, I like that light a lot. Uh, takes 14,500. They got their specs a little wrong on their website. Uh, this is also a pretty good light. I don't, that whole tactical, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, the strike bezel, the black coating, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the difference between these and this isn't so much capability. There is some difference in their technology, and there's a little difference in their pocket clips and things like that. 
but the tail switch versus the regular forward flashlight switch, you know, is, is the difference between using a light like this and being tactical, you know, and honestly, you know, that's one of those things that drives me up a wall when I see, when I, when I see uh, that, that's, if it were tactical, the light would be in their off hand. <laughs> you know, it'd be more like this would be tactical. Uh, it wouldn't be primary hand, you know, up by your cheek. You're better off reaching out with it. I, but that's it, you know, just one of those things I like to laugh about when I watch videos and, and when I listen to myself think, you know, because I do silly stuff like that too. You know, here I am out in the cow pen. You know, I, I'm ridiculous. I shouldn't even, you know, I, I carried this exact light for several months. I caught myself doing that a bunch of times. It was ridiculous. Um, anyway, that's it. That's what I got to say about that. I really appreciate the time you took watching my video. Uh, you know, I, I hope some of that information was useful to you. Do look down in the link for that, that article I'm linking to. There's going to be a link to some of these flashlights probably on Amazon. You know, they're, they're all awesome. You can buy any of them. If you use my links, I might make a couple of, you know, 50 cents or something off it. That'd be awesome. Uh, other than that, I've got nothing left to say for today. I really do appreciate your time, and I hope the rest of your day goes really, really well. Bye-bye now.